Did you know that it's estimated that a staggering 84% of sexual assaults are committed by someone the victim knows? Join me as we uncover the shocking truth behind non-stranger predators and the tactics they use to perpetrate these heinous crimes. It's time to shed light on the hidden reality and empower ourselves with knowledge and awareness. I'm here to shed some light on the tactics used, the impact it has on victims, and provide you with resources for support. If you're new here, hi. My name's Justina. I'm the founder of Rise Self-Protection, I'm a trauma-informed jiu-jitsu coach and a self-defense enthusiast. My goal is to arm women plus with the skills to protect themselves on the streets and in their everyday lives. Self-defense begins long before things get violent. So if you're interested in learning self-protection that extends far beyond physical techniques, you're in the right place. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I post new videos on important topics just like this every Monday. You can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram for more inspiring content. I also have a free private Facebook group called The Rise Sisterhood, where we dive deeper into thought-provoking conversations, share our stories, learn from each other, and support one another. And if you want to help me spread the word to sisters who need it the most, you can support my content for as little as three bucks a month by becoming a patron on Patreon. Your support is what allows me to have the time to make this content available to the women plus who need it most but can't afford to pay. All right, so I'm so glad you're here because we're going to have an important conversation about non-stranger predators. It's crucial that we raise awareness about this issue especially when it comes to our safety and well-being. So let's dive right in. The statistics are eye-opening. In a survey of a little over 3,100 women from 32 college campuses in the U.S., MS Magazine found that one in four women surveyed were victims of rape or victims of attempted rape, and that 84% of those victims knew their attacker. This statistic is likely much higher since that same research showed that 42% of the rape victims told no one about the assault. These numbers might surprise you, but it's crucial that we acknowledge and address this reality because quite frankly, just like you, I can't just accept things the way they are anymore. So by understanding the way these perpetrators operate, we can stay one step ahead. So let's talk about the different types of non-stranger predators. Non-stranger predators can come from various categories and it's important to be aware of the different types of people who may pose a risk. Here are some examples. Acquaintances. Non-stranger predators can be people we know on a casual or social level, like friends, classmates, coworkers, or neighbors. They might exploit the trust and familiarity we have with them to gain access and control over their victim. Family members. Unfortunately, non-stranger predators can even be family members. This includes immediate family members, extended relatives, or even close family friends. The bond of family can be manipulated to maintain power and control over the victim. Authority figures. Non-stranger predators can also be people in positions of authority and influence, such as teachers, coaches, mentors, or religious leaders. These people might exploit their trusted positions to manipulate and prey upon vulnerable people, especially children and young adults. People in positions of trust. There are also cases where non-stranger predators are people who are entrusted with the care, guidance, or support of others. This can include caregivers, therapists, counselors, or anyone in a position of trust. These people might abuse their position to exploit and harm those who depend on them. People the victim relies on. Non-stranger predators can also be people whom the victim relies on for support, guidance, or assistance. This can include romantic partners, close friends, mentors, or caregivers. These people exploit the victim's trust and dependence, manipulating their vulnerabilities and creating a sense of dependency. Victims find it difficult to recognize the abuse or break free from the toxic dynamics due to their reliance on the predator for emotional or practical needs. It's important to realize that non-stranger predators can exist in any walk of life and can appear friendly, trustworthy, and familiar. They can infiltrate the closest relationships and use the victim's dependence as a tool for control. But by recognizing the different categories in which they operate, we can be more vigilant and take steps to protect ourselves and those around us. So now let's go over some of the common tactics that they use. A predator might first try to win the trust and admiration of the target and the people closest to the target by appearing charming and friendly. By cultivating a false sense of trust, the predator begins the manipulation and slowly starts to introduce the abuse. Non-stranger predators are skilled at manipulating the emotions of their victims. They might use tactics like guilt tripping, making the victim feel responsible for the predator's behavior or emotions. They may instill fear through threats or create a sense of obligation and dependency through excessive displays of love and affection. By manipulating the victim's emotions, they exert control and ensure their compliance. Gaslighting is a particularly insidious tactic used by non-stranger predators. 
It involves distorting the victim's perception of reality and making them question their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Predator might deny or twist events, invalidate the victim's emotions, or even rewrite the past to kind of create confusion or doubt. Over time, the victim begins to doubt their own judgment, feeling like they can't trust their own perceptions or instincts. Non-stranger predators often isolate their victims from friends, family, and support networks. They might actively discourage or prevent the victim from maintaining relationships outside of the abusive dynamic. By cutting off these external connections, the predator creates a sense of dependency and control. The victim becomes more reliant on the predator for social interaction, validation, and emotional support, making it harder to break free from the abusive relationship. Some non-stranger predators exert control over the victim's finances as a means of maintaining power. They might control access to money, limit the victim's financial independence, or exploit their resources for personal gain. By controlling the victim's finances, the predator keeps them economically dependent and less likely to leave the abusive situation. Non-stranger predators also use threats, intimidation, or displays of aggression to maintain dominance over their victims. These tactics create a climate of fear, making the victim believe that their safety or the safety of their loved ones or their reputation is at risk if they try to expose the abuse. The fear instilled by the predator acts as a powerful control mechanism, keeping the victim trapped and compliant. These power dynamics and manipulation tactics are intended to establish and maintain control over the victim. The impact of non-stranger predators on victims can be devastating. Beyond the immediate physical harm, survivors often endure long-term emotional, psychological, and even physical effects. It's crucial that we acknowledge the profound impact and provide support to those who have experienced such trauma. Some of the impacts include emotional effects. Non-stranger predator abuse can deeply impact victims' emotional well-being. The fear and anxiety stemming from the trauma can linger long after the abuse has ended. Victims might constantly feel on edge, expecting harm or danger, and the emotional manipulation employed by the predator can lead to a diminished sense of self-worth and confidence. The victim might question their own judgment and struggle with feelings of guilt and shame. Over time, victims might find it challenging to trust others, including themselves, making it difficult to form healthy relationships and establish emotional connections. But also psychological effects. The psychological impact of non-stranger predator abuse can be extensive. Victims might experience symptoms of PTSD, which can include intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, and nightmares related to the traumatic experiences. The gaslighting and manipulation tactics used by predators can lead to cognitive dissonance, confusion, and self-doubt. Victims may blame themselves for the abuse, feeling a sense of powerlessness and inability to trust their own perceptions. These psychological effects can significantly disrupt their sense of reality, making it challenging to navigate life and maintain emotional well-being. Non-stranger predator abuse can also take a toll on the victim's physical health. Chronic stress and trauma experienced can weaken the immune system, leaving individuals more susceptible to illness and experiencing higher risk of developing physical health conditions. Victims might also engage in self-destructive behaviors as coping mechanisms, like substance abuse or self-harm, which can further exacerbate physical health problems. The physical effects can range from sleep disturbances and appetite changes to chronic pain and psychosomatic symptoms, resulting from the emotional distress endured. The abuse also has an impact on relationships and social functioning. Non-stranger predator abuse can have a profound impact on victims' relationships and social interactions. Manipulation and control tactics used by predators can make it challenging for survivors to establish healthy boundaries, trust others, and form intimate connections. Victims often struggle with asserting their needs, fearing potential repercussions or re-traumatization. The isolation imposed by the predator, either by cutting off social connections or by instilling a sense of shame and secrecy, can further exacerbate the impact on relationships and social functioning. Victims may withdraw from social activities, experience difficulty in trusting others, and have challenges in seeking support from their support networks. So now let's talk about healing and recovery. Recognizing the long-term effects of non-stranger predator abuse is crucial for guiding survivors on their healing journey. Empathy, validation, and access to specialized support services are vital components of recovery. Therapeutic interventions such as trauma-informed therapy can help survivors process their experiences, manage symptoms of trauma, and develop healthy coping mechanisms. Support groups and community resources can also provide a sense of belonging and connection with others who have shared similar experiences. Healing and recovery involve rebuilding a sense of self, establishing healthy boundaries, and reclaiming personal power. Understanding the profound emotional, psychological, physical, and social impact of non-stranger predator abuse 
is essential for promoting empathy, awareness, and effective support for survivors. By providing comprehensive resources, fostering a trauma-informed approach, and facilitating a safe and validating environment, we can help survivors navigate their healing journey and regain a sense of agency, resilience, and well-being. Prevention strategies and education play a vital role in safeguarding potential victims and creating safer environments. By raising awareness, promoting healthy relationships, and providing resources, we can empower people to recognize and address non-stranger predator behavior. So here's why prevention and education are crucial. Early identification. Prevention strategies focus on educating people about the warning signs and red flags of non-stranger predator behavior. By providing information about manipulation tactics, power dynamics, and boundary violations, we can empower people to recognize potential abusive situations early on. Early identification allows for prompt intervention and support, preventing further victimization and minimizing the long-term impact on people. Education plays a crucial role in empowering potential victims to recognize their rights, establish boundaries, and assert themselves in various relationships. Through comprehensive education programs, we can promote consent culture, teach assertiveness skills, and foster a culture of respect. By equipping people with knowledge and skills, we empower them to protect themselves, make informed decisions, and seek help when they need it. Prevention and education initiatives also work to challenge victim-blaming attitudes and debunk myths surrounding non-stranger predator incidents. By promoting a culture of accountability, understanding, and empathy, we can shift the blame from the victims to the perpetrators. This shift in perspective creates an environment where survivors feel supported, validated, and more likely to come forward, seek help, and access the resources available to them. Prevention strategies aim to build robust support networks for potential victims. This involves providing accessible resources such as helplines, counseling services, support groups, and community organizations. Education plays a key role in connecting people to these resources and fostering community involvement. By creating strong support networks, we ensure that victims have access to the assistance that they need and can find solidarity and understanding within their communities. Prevention and education initiatives also work towards creating safer environments by advocating for policies and practices that prioritize safety and well-being. This includes comprehensive training programs for professionals in fields that involve potential interaction with victims, such as educators, healthcare providers, and law enforcement. By fostering a culture of prevention, we create communities and institutions that are vigilant, responsive, and committed to protecting potential victims. Remember, prevention starts with each one of us. By challenging societal norms, promoting consent culture, and fostering a culture of empathy and support, we can create a society where non-stranger predators have no place to hide. If you found this video informative, please share it with others and continue the conversation. And if you want to hang out with me more, follow me on TikTok and Instagram and join my free private Facebook page, The Rise Sisterhood, where we learn from each other, share our stories, grow and heal together. I'd also love to invite you to download my free training on defending against creepy hugs and other everyday boundary violations. And if you want to dive deeper into self-defense, I've even created an online course designed to let you learn effective defenses to some of the most common threats against women from anywhere in the world. Finally, you can gain access to exclusive content and support my work by becoming a patron on Patreon. Your support helps me create content that educates sisters from all walks of life and empowers them to live with less fear. Thanks for joining me today. Stay safe out there.